Chapter 12, Pediatric Dosages. When working with children, it's especially important that we check that our calculated amount the, of the medication that we're going to administer is within the safe dosage range. So you do want to make sure that you check that the number that you got when you did your calculation is within the recommended range. We're going to be calculating oral and parenteral dosages based on body weight and body surface area. We're also going to perform calculations using a volume control chamber and then calculating daily fluid maintenance. Now when you're um, administering medication to children, oral administration is preferred. However, if the child is younger, let's say under five years old, it will be very difficult for them to swallow a tablet or a capsule. So in this case, you would provide the medication in a, a liquid form, like an elixir or a syrup or a suspension. And then you'll use an oral syringe or a calibrated dropper or a measuring spoon to administer that medication. Here's an image of a bottle of medication as well as a measuring spoon. Here's another image. This one is of um, two droppers on the left here, an oral syringe and a measuring spoon. Now, you don't want to mix a measuring device that came with one medication and then use it to administer a different medication. Unfortunately, measuring devices for oral um, administration are not standardized, so you can't just mix, like use a dropper that, that came from one medication to administer a different medication. Okay, so this is gonna be a dosage based on body size. Here we can see that the order is 30 milligrams per kilogram every six hours. Now we're going to read this label below, and we know that the child weighs 38 kilograms. Okay, now the question is, how many milliliters of the drug will you administer to this child? If you notice on the label that once you've reconstituted this medication, the strength is 200 milligrams per 5 milliliters. So we're going to use this as well as our information in the order um, and the child's weight to calculate the amount in milliliters that we want to administer. All right, so we're going to start with the size of the patient and eventually we're going to get the milliliters to administer. So you take the size and you multiply the size times the order. So we've done this in the past where we multiplied size times the order. So there's our size, 38 kilograms. Next, we multiply by the order, which was 30 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Now, we're going to multiply that by the strength of the medication. And notice that we put our milligrams in the denominator so that they're going to divide out with the milligrams over here from the order. And we'll be left with milliliters, which is what we were looking for. And we end up getting 28.5 milliliters. In this example, we're going to determine if the order is safe for this child based on their size, specifically their weight. So the order is 45 thousandths of a milligram IM stat and the child weighs 40 kilograms. Now the recommended dose is between 1 to 2 one thousandths of a milligram and this is per kilogram of body weight. So the question is, is an order of 45 thousandths of a milligram safe for this child or not? So we're going to use the minimum recommended dose, which was the low range, because if you recall, it was one to two, between one and two thousandths of a milligram per kilogram. That was a safe range. So we take the child's um, size here, and we're going to multiply it. This is actually a typo right here. This should be a time sign. So we're going to multiply it by this safe dose range, okay? the, the low end of the safe range and we're left with an amount of milligrams. Okay, so the low end is um, four tenths of a milligram. Now we do the same thing for the high end of the range, the maximum recommended dose, which was two one thousandths of a milligram per kilogram of body weight. So we take our size of our patient, and again, we're gonna multiply, this should have been a multiply sign, multiply, by the high end of the safe dosage range, and we end up with 8 tenths of a milligram. 
So what we've done here is we've created the safe dosage range for this specific child that weighs 40 kilograms. And we have that the dose should be between 4 and 8 hundredths of a milligram. Now our order was originally 45 thousandths of a milligram, but this is within the safe range, so this dose is safe for the child. So if you're not sure, um, our low end, if we add on that ending zero that, that's uh, after the four, this is 0 0.04 or 40 thousandths of a milligram, and then the high end is going to be 80 thousandths of a milligram, and 45 thousandths is in between those two, so it is within the safe range. Many times with pediatric medications, um, a volume control chamber or a VCC is used to administer the medication because it avoids fluid overload. Now the VCC is calibrated in one milliliter increments and it has a capacity of 100 to 150 milliliters. It can be used as a primary or secondary line. When you're administering medication with an IV piggyback, the medication is added to the top injection port of the VCC. So we can see that up here. And then fluid is added from the IV bag to further dilute the medication. Once the infusion is complete, additional IV fluid is added to the VCC, and this is in order to, fl to flush any remaining medication. So you would actually check with your specific facility where you'll be working um, about the amount of fluid that you'll use to flush the VCC tubing. Now we're going to be calculating daily fluid maintenance. The fluid that a child requires over a 24 hour period is referred to their daily fluid maintenance needs. This is going to be based on their body weight. Now you want to be very careful and exact with your calculations because children are quite susceptible to um, dehydration and also extreme levels of hydration or fluid overload. Okay, so here's the breakdown. For the first 10 kilograms of body weight, the fluid amount should be 100 milliliters per kilogram. So this is re between basically 0 and 10 kilograms of body weight. Now for the next 10 kilograms of body weight, so this is after your first 10, so this is between 10 and 20 kilograms of body weight, now the fluid need is 550 excuse me, milliliters per kilogram. So again, between 0 and 10 kilograms is 100 milliliters per kilogram. Then between 10 and 20 kilograms of body weight is 50 milliliters per kilogram. And then after 20 kilograms or above that amount of body weight, then the fluid amount is 20 milliliters per kilogram. Okay, so you're, we're going to end up breaking down a child's weight into these three um, categories, between 0 and 10 kilograms, between 10 and 20, and above 20 kilograms. Okay, so here's our calculation. The order is maintenance. Okay, so um, just real quick, this is it, specifically maintenance because this is different than a replacement fluid. The maintenance fluid is what you need just daily to maintain um, your fluid balance or your fluid levels. Um, replacement fluids are if you lose fluid, some amount of fluids through maybe diarrhea or vomiting or through a fever. So that's different. Replacement fluids are different. The order is maintenance for a child who weighs 35 kilograms. At what rate should the pump be set in milliliters per hour? <clears throat> so what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to divide the child's weight, which was 35 kilograms, into three portions. And this is based on the previous um, information on the slide before. So we want to take the first 10 kilograms, the next 10, and then anything above 20. So between 0 and 10, between 10 and 20, and then above 20. Okay, so this first amount is between is the first 10 kilograms, this is the second 10 kilograms, and this is what's left above 20 kilograms of body weight to get us up all the way up to 35. So this is the first combined, the first 20 kilograms. 
Okay, and then the last amount is what's above the 20 kilograms. Okay, so we can see that we have three different amounts of body weight. Uh, well, the first two are technically the same, but we have three different calculations to perform here. The first 10 kilograms of body weight, we're going to multiply that by our fluid um, needing to be 100 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. That gives us a total of 1,000 milliliters so far. Then we go ahead and we go to the next 10 kilograms of body weight. So this gets us basically up to 20 kilograms of body weight. And that's going to be multiplied by 50 milliliters per kilogram for a total of 500 milliliters. And then the last portion is a, what's above the 20 original or initial kilograms of body weight. And there's 15 remaining kilograms to get us to 35 kilograms total. And we take that and we multiply that by 20 milliliters per kilogram of body weight, giving us 30 milliliters. So if we add all of this up, we end up with 1,800 milliliters. Okay. So the daily maintenance is determined from our previous calculations that, um, to be 1,800 milliliters per day. So the question was originally, how many milliliters per hour is this? So we just take our amount per day and we multiply by our unit fraction here that's going to turn days into hours. We divide the days out and we're left with 75 milliliters per hour. And that's what we'll set the pump to be um, at. All right, to finish up here, just some important information to either recall or to know in general. Um, you want to be very precise and careful when calculating a medication for pediatric patients. And you always want to check to make sure that the order or the dosage amount that you've calculated is within a safe range. When you're working with pediatric dosages, you want to round down most of the time um, instead of rounding off or rounding up because it could potentially be an overdose if you do that. So you want to round down. IV bags should be 500 milliliters or less for pediatric patients and 2 milliliters or less should be given intramuscularly. You want to use an electronic control device or a volume control chamber. Uh, when working with pediatric infusions, and this is just to be more careful, just to take more precautions um, and to avoid any unnecessary risks. And then we've talked about the volume control chamber and flushing it um, with a proper amount of fluid, and you would consult your facility for that fluid amount. You also want to know your facility's policy in regards to including the medication volume as part of the total infusion volume. Minimal and maximal dilution volumes for some IV drugs are recommended, and this is in order to prevent fluid overload, minimize irritation to veins, and reduce um, toxic effects. So if you have an excessively high concentration of an IV drug, um, there could be adverse effects. Now, when you're preparing an IV drug solution, the smallest added volume results in a stronger concentration. So this is what we would call the minimum dilution. So think about it like this. If you're just adding a small amount of um, fluid or diluent to dissolve the drug, then the drug is not getting very much diluted and therefore it's stronger. The largest added volume is the maximal dilution, and this is going to give you the weakest strength or weakest concentration of the drug because you've added quite a bit to form this solution, and therefore um, diluting that drug. And daily fluid maintenance depends on the weight and includes both oral and parenteral fluids.